Hey Dan. There's a bit of lag. So I can see people as they're dropping in. Uh, hi Robert. Nice to see you and Nathan. If I keep disappearing it's because I've got a laptop going on over here as well. Hi Dave, <laughs> this is either going to be really fantastic or it's just going to bomb massively. So um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, don't forget, as you're doing, add things in the comments. Um, if anybody else can answer questions, that's great. Um, I'll try and give you as much of uh, my benefit of any experience that I've got um, and we'll see how we do. I've got the, uh, the best part of the tying kit. Oh no, you don't want that, Dan. You don't want me to just break into song because I've got uh, a 12 year old daughter so it'll just be frozen tracks to be perfectly fair. Hey Darren, it's good to see you. We're just uh, spend a little bit of time just waiting for other people that might want to drop in before we start. Um, I'm doing this from my uh, from my cell phone, my camera phone. Um, so one thing I do have worked out is that uh, the focus isn't perfect, and I can't autofocus onto the fly. Um, so I've ordered loads of stuff to go with my SLR camera to to be able to to do very good close-ups. Oh no, I've done that one, Eric. I've done the walking around the office singing Paw Patrol. Yeah, yeah, no, that's in my head. Um, Tr Tree Fu Tom was another good one. Um, that you know, you end up doing the action with it as well. Hi, Andy. It's good to see you. Hey, Kieran. Really great for you to be here, mate. So, <laughs> it's a classic. It is. It is a classic. Yeah, I've got one, Phil. Um, I've got it all on my um, uh, SLR camera, but it needed a micro or a mini HD to, H to HDMI cable in it sort of and I, I didn't order that i ordered all the other stuff stuff so uh we'll uh we'll get there in the end get a demonstration dan do you mean of the singing because that you really don't want that you really want to sleep tonight Right, we've got 19 people. That's, man, it's more than I thought. <laughs> Both. Uh, right then, folks. Welcome to, uh, welcome to my man cave. Um, it's sort of our old converted garage. Um, and I sort of took it over and I've got loads of fly tying stuff all over the place. Um, got... <laughs> It's all contained. I don't know if you can see this. That you can just by the side of me here. Um, if I just point that to you, you can probably see that all of my fly tie and stuff is just dotted around, um, and uh, it's uh, it's ever growing. As those of you that know me and, uh, and and know my house, you'll know that there is shed loads of stuff that in here. A um, lot of it um, is old stuff. From when I was a, a youngster, I mean, still going strong. Hi, James. Hi, Richard. Um, and uh, <laughs> you want to see my cap collection? I'll do that in a bit. I'll do the cap collection later on. Um, but And it's growing all the time. Um, but I've also got lots of stuff that I've inherited from people over the years that have given up time because they've they've got old and their, their hands aren't what they were and they've they've gifted me lots of stuff. I could do with a shed, Eric. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Um, could do with a separate house, actually, to, to just fly tight, and that'd be great. 
right then guys um so um ultimately this is all about us um sort of getting together and uh and me showing you um a few key things a, key, a few tricks a few tips and anything else that that you guys want um i'm not an absolute expert i'll say that now um but what i can do is tie a fly and i can catch fish with them um and i like to tie flies that um ultimately i know um <laughs> that ultimately i know that i'm really confident with um as you can see here i've got um uh, uh, a classic wet fly teal blue and silver that i've been tying up for an order um and uh, I love tying these guys. It just takes me back to when I was uh, 11, 12 years old when I used to sit in Cardiff Reservoirs Fly Fishing Club um, up in their old clubhouse full of smoke and cigar smoke with the guys all drinking um, drinking beers um, and, and the odd, odd whiskey and, uh, and teaching me how to tie these guys. And I wasn't allowed to, to tie it in any other way than, than in the traditional way. And ultimately... If I didn't, it was in those days where you get a slap on the hand or you just get a stern look. And that stern look was enough to make you go out. Ah, I need to do something else. Um, like with all these things, with fly tying, um, I don't know if you guys have found this, but it's less about the, I find it's less about the patterns for me. Okay. Um, it's all about proportion it's all about technique and the technique then feeds into every other single pattern that you can the <laughs> rum is better uh, every other single pattern that you then start to tie um, because the the individual techniques are transferable and once you've practiced them and you've been able to build them into your tying the next time you come across it in another pattern I said it's seen it in a magazine you'll go, you'll just look at it and go I can tie that I definitely can tie that so tonight um ultimately I was going to look at and tie up some simple buzzer patterns for you um and they are exceptionally exceptionally simple um and uh so I'm going to start off if this is okay with you guys and I'm assuming that everybody can see I do appreciate that the focus isn't perfect here uh, but I'll try and do what I can um I'm going to start off uh, with a, a full in mill. Let me just change the light focus there. Full in mill. Okay. Um, check nymph hook. Um, I love these hooks. Uh, I, if I could, I'd tie everything on them, including my dry flies. Um, they just, I, I don't know, there's something about them. Um, they, for me, the curve of the hook is perfect for buzzers, it's perfect for, um, for beetles. I love tying um, my um, gamorous patterns on it. Um, emerges as well, even though it's a heavy gauge hook, they'll sit in the surface. So you know it, it's a great versatile hook, um, and uh, and and it's good quality full in mill as well. So these are size twelve. Um, it's the FM fifty sixty five. Um, whenever I get these, I always buy a, a box in every size because I go through them like like water most of the time. Um, so I hope the light, let me know if the light is in the wrong position for you guys. Okay. So I'm just going to put the, um, put the hook into my vise. I've been tying with much wider hooks earlier on. Um, and there it is. And I'm, for those of you who are new to fly tying, I'm just listening for that little ping as I just flick the hook. Cause then I know that it's not going to go anywhere and it's fine and it's, and it's all set okay so for this particular buzzer um i've caught lots of fish on this in lots of different colors hi dylan um hi joe joe hello um in lots of different colors but once you've got this technique in play you can then adapt it and you can start adding new materials in you can start making it into cdc suspender buzzers you can then start making them into um into into uh, any other sort of buzzer that you want to that you can even think of so i'm going to start off with a tie-in thread um it's a utc um tie-in thread um particularly like this for um for my buzzers because it lies flat okay um and uh and that means that you get a really beautiful profile running through 
So um, we're going to start off. I'm just going to tie on to my uh, to my hook. So I'm just going to bring it across. I'm going to tie on. I'm actually going to start off, and I'm going to bring it right up, okay, to the eye. I don't need to leave any space for this one, and I'm just going to tie it in so that it's I'm all set. Um, I'm getting old, so I've got to wear some magnifiers for this. Um, so here we are. I'm then going to, if I take it back a little bit, I'm a big one for counting my thread wraps. I don't know if anybody else is. Um, but I like to count the thread wraps because it gives me consistency. But it also allows me to ensure that I'm not over bulking my flies. Um, so as I put it in, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now generally that brings me down in line here with the hook point okay just gonna add one more one maybe two more there because I do quite quite um, quite a, a large sort of thorax area on my buzzers now I've got this this tag end here now if I you can cut it I do like quite just pinging it off and then bringing my thread back down and we're all in so I'm not going all the way back around the bend because I actually like this particular buzzer to be very, very, very skinny. Um, so next stage, I'm going to add a, um, something in there for a rib. Now, if you look at chironomids and you look at the bu buzzer pupa um, under the microscope and you look at them in depth, um, they've got a very, very significant segmented um, profile. Um, now... I know that the fish aren't going to go out there with this fantastic, um, with this, uh, uh, you know, they're not going to go out there with the fantastic microscopic viewpoint. Um, but at the end of the day, there's got to be trigger points. There's got to be things that they're going to look for. Um, I'm just looking at um, James's comment there, UTC best for lying flat. It is, it is absolutely mint. Um, and, uh, and and I use it in for lots and lots of different patterns. But, um, you definitely use it, James, for tying stimulators because I just love the fact that I can get it lying really flat across um, the, the main body of the fly and it ensures that I'm not getting too much bulk in there. Um, so now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go for some holographic uh, tinsel. Actually, I think I was using, yeah, I'm using uh, um, purple holographic tinsel here. Um, I can't remember what make it is. I just picked it up at Sportfish. I was in there one day and went, oh, I quite like that purple. I'll get some of that. Um, it's very fine. It's very fine. And it's great for ribbing this sort of uh, this sort of buzzer. So I'm just going to take off a little bit. Now, I will apologise now. I do have some bad habits. I, I will um, tie with my scissors in my on my knuckles like this. So I'm gonna try not to do things like that because it'll lead some of you astray. Um, I'm gonna take my, my tinsel, my holographic rib, and I can I, I found over the years I, I can come in and then I can start to tie like this and it and, and I miss it and it doesn't go and I can't get it to sit. And then it suddenly dawned on me that actually if I push it under and just lift up my tying thread like this and just bring it back it'll just sit on the top and it's already tied in and that's all I've got to do so if I just um, give it a pull I can bring it all the way down there we go all the way down and now I can start to tie it in now I want touching turns wherever possible running all the way through this hi Sean um, running all the way through this so the best way to do that, I find, is to use the rib as if it was the tag end of your tying thread when you first start. Because as you come, a look, come across and drop down and pull it back, it makes them all touch. So as you're dropping it down, and I count them, so that's five, and I count them in my head, and generally I'm looking for about 40 wraps bringing it all the way down. So as I'm counting it through, there we go, all the way down, keeping my tinsel tight. And I'm just bringing it in. You don't want to take it too far down. I do like a curve on a buzzer, I've got to say. Um, and, uh, and 
that's why I'm not using a straight um, a straight hook, which you can use. It's absolutely fine. Um, but you can. You, I, it's hard to see here. But what I've got here is a. Um, there is no gaps in my underbody here, which is fantastic. Now while I'm leaving my bobbin to spin, okay. Um, see you later, Dan. Um, while I'm leaving my bobbin to spin, it's taking the um, the the spin out of the thread because every time you take a turn of course the thread t the thread spins um, it's taking it out and, I, and it's just flattening out and you can see it's lovely and flat there now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it all the way back up it doesn't have to be touching turns for this bit because I've done the hard work already I'm going to bring it back up in line with the hook point and it's just going to sit like this so um, feel free to ask questions. Um, if I go too fast, tell me to slow down. Um, but what we've now got is a nice underbody all set up there. Now, what I was saying earlier in terms of techniques is that if you take them down from here and taking the thread all the way down to the end point here, so at that point you can tie in um, a, a wire rib, um, you could then dub in some uh, some dubbing of choice um, and dub it all the way up, rib it, and you've got a much thicker um, uh, um, body section on there and you're starting to develop a different type of buzzer. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, Tim, in terms of this UTC, um, let me just check. Uh, this is a, a 70 denier. Um, it's black. Um, if you go on to, I don't know if they're still doing it, but the Glasgow Angling Centre. Um, yeah, sure, Mark. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, struggling with the grey top. I do appreciate that. I'll remember that for the next one. Um, the Glasgow Angling Centre were doing something like um, 12 spools of UTC for 20 quid or something like that, um, which would be fantastic. You know, which would be absolutely fantastic. Um, so we've got to this point here, and now I'm just going to take it up a little bit more so that I can now wind my rib in. So the rib itself, I like to take it counterclockwise away from the direction that I was, um, that I, my tying thread's going. So I'm just going to take it round. I've got it nice and long. I don't want it too short. Nice and long. And I'm just going to bring it round so that it is horizontal with my vice by here okay right <laughs> yeah and uh as i as i bring it up my first couple of turns i like to make them not too close together but fairly close so that there's a small gap between the ribbing sections and as i move around and as i come up through the fly I'm just going to make them wider and wider now that mimics the segmentation of the pupa in in the natural world as I take it up I'm just going to bring it up to where the hook point is I can take it a little bit further because actually now what I'm going to do is just tie it off two wraps and that's enough um, one of the, one of the things I'm a, a big advocate is, is less is more on flies. Um, so less wraps, just use what you need to use. And if you're finding you're having to put five, six, seven more, um, then that's too many. I personally think that's way too many. Okay. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to bring it across to the eye and then at a slight angle, I'm just going to use my curved scissors and just trim it. Okay, um, and then I can tie that tag end down, take it all the way up to the eye, and then all the way back down again in line with the hook point. So at this point, this is where your proportions become really important. Okay, and the the majority of your um, your hooks are going to give you the key pointers. 
So a lot of it is uh, is in line with the hook point or in line with the barb. So in this case, this area across the top is going to form the um, the thorax area of our fly here. Okay, um, it's a very skinny buzzer, but of course, as I said. As you get to this point, you could do whatever you like now. You could dub something onto it. You could put a thorax cover so that you could bring it across. Um, you can put cheeks in, which we're going to do in a moment um, uh, on another fly. Um, but at this point here, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to settle for some breathers. And I'm literally, I'm just going to use um, some, uh, some Antron. Get my light out of the way. Just going to use some uh, Antron body yarn, um, white. Um, I bought a shed load of it loads of it from um off ebay um i've got packets of the stuff and in different colors most of them i've got no idea what i'm going to use them for so i'm going to take a section and one little section of this will do multiple flies and uh, it's got this nice little kink in it so i always try and you see where the kink is by there the natural kink i use that as my my cutting point and what i'm after it's very much that's too much i think that's too much for me i don't like it okay but each to their own um, and what i do is i use my dubbing needle and i just split it in half with my dubbing needle normally i do it on the desk but for the benefit of you guys so you can see if you just pull it it'll knot up and then it becomes really hard to unknot and it just takes extra time. So I'm just going to push it with my dubbing needle. There we go. And I can get about, I reckon we can get about six or seven flies from that. And there we go. Right, so there's my section of Antron, which is more than enough for what we need. So I need to get it into, the, into that thorax area. So again, I could put it on top and do a pinch turn and wrap it in but I do like just to push it under lift up my tying thread and just drop it back so it sits on top and then i can have a look at it and just decide if it's positioned where i want it to i've got plenty at the front there but i've got lots of waste at the back over there so i'm just gonna pull it forwards so I've got less waste at the back and then I'm going to put a locking turn in Now notice at all times here I don't it's hard for you to see here I know and I've I do have a, a, an extra camera accessory come in for me to do this a bit better but the, all the time that UTC has been unwinding and is lying flat and uh, and that's perfect for our buzzer patterns so I'm just going to put a couple of turns in like that Okay, um, and there we go, um, and I've set in, and started to set my breathers in at this point, okay. Um, yeah, is that deal still on? I think somebody said it was. If it is, it's a good deal, that one, um, definitely. Um, you know, and tying in materials, put them under, bring them across the top, um, it just makes life so much easier, and then it's very easy as well. To, to go, mm, don't like that, and to swap it out again. So now we've locked that in. I'm just going to bring my tying thread further up. It doesn't need to be touching turns up to the eye at this point, because you're gonna we're going to tidy all of this up as we go along. There we go. Now, it's up to you. You can just double this back over and tie that in, or you can cut that off and taper it. I'm going to cut it. Uh, a 45 degree angle I'm going to pull out the waist end cut it at 45 degrees now what that will do is allow me to taper it back okay all right <laughs> Dan, Dan's going to buy all the stock by the looks of it <laughs> um, so we've got to this point here and it's looking good so far so I'm just going to Make sure that my thread, just going to give it a little spin, make sure it's as flat as I can get it. And I'm going to do some touching turns. All the way back 
and you can see here that I'm just coming to the section just give it a spin get it to flatten out a bit more might need to go the other direction actually there you go I'm just watching it and I give it a little there and it's tapering in quite nicely and I can take it back and then gradually now work my way back and it's very much a case of now building up the thorax area and you can have it as thick or as thin as you like you could tie it off and put a different color in okay um, so um, you could um, yeah, you could do all sorts of stuff you could uh, um, uh, now put in the thorax cover so that you could put another color coming across okay um, and uh, and as we come across and I'm just building it up into almost a, a carrot shape as we're going across and I'm trying to keep it as flat as follow uh, flat as I can so just stopping every now and then just checking it so George has put in uh, I was tying with Antron and Chenille 20 years ago why the uptrend yeah same here mate I was tying with it when I was you know 30 odd years ago um, and I, for me it's something I've always used I've always had I'm still tying with some of the materials that I, I had when I was when I was 12 13 I've still got it um, which is <laughs> which is amazing um, um, but I think it's because um, it's pretty um, I, I think you can use it for lots of different patterns there's so much stuff that, that it's applicable for and um, you know, now that we've got uh, suede chenilles as well, um, you can then start, suddenly start to use them to make extended bodies for mayflies and and for um, for daddy long legs and and hawthorn flies and all sorts of things. So um, it's a really um, um, ubiquitous material. Um, Antron itself as well, um, it, it it does have some flotation properties too, um, which is pretty good. Um, but you can use it to just make little shucks. You can make, use it to make wings. You can do all sorts of things. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's a good. It is. It is, Dave. It's a great post material for uh, for clean cameras and things like that as well. Um, and you can mix up the different colours as well. Um, so I'm just going to build this up, and we're almost done on this fly, um, because this is it. This is all it is. Um, and as a buzzer. Um, when people start talking about, oh, you want a little black buzzer, taking this down from a size 12 and taking it down to a 16 and sometimes even to an 18. Um, the, you know, down at me on springs on the um, on the catch and release, um, you know, I've enticed some really wary brown trout out of there. I'm using a tiny little buzzer, almost stalking tactics, flicking in, bringing it across and just let, and then just striking when you see that flare of the gills um, and suddenly um, you're catching fish when everybody else isn't so um, you know this this particular buzzer is always going to have a place in my box I tie it in um, in black primarily um, various shades of olive um, but also claret as well and they tend to be my three go-to colors um, for this so I'm just going to finish that here and what I'm going to do now is just going to bring the antron back and I'm going to put one two three turns on the eye and it's just holding the antron up like that just make sure i've got it where i want it to be just gonna put another one in there just for luck and uh, now this is where i traditionally lose my um, whip finish tool um oh, there it is it's hiding um find my whip finish tool i'm always losing it and now all i'm going to do is use my whip finish tool going to use my left hand to pull back the antron and I'm going to put one two three turns in and tie off like that now at this point I, I tend to use um, a scalpel um, to trim off my uh, my tying thread it leaves a, a, a much neater cut I find okay um, so I'm just going to bring it in. Make sure you don't cut at too much of an angle because uh, you'll end up cutting through all your thread and all your locking um, threads. So I'm just going to give it a little slice and away it comes. And I can put that down. And I'll go back to my trusty, my trusty scissors. 
and now I want the length of breathers here. Well, you can have them as long as you like or as short as you like. I, I quite like having them the length of the thorax. Um, so I just bring it back and I come in and give it a little flick. Now you could leave it like that. Okay, we could leave it like that. Um, most of the time that'd be absolutely fine. Um, but I like to make them a little bit bulletproof um, because those uh, those fish have got sharp teeth, as we know. I want to use them. Um, I want to use them more and more and more. I want to get a number of fish out of one fly. Um, so what I'm going to do is going to use some of. Um, <laughs> we're all familiar, I hope, with uh, with the, uh, the the very traditional Sally Hansen um, hard as nails. Okay, very traditional Sally Hansen hard as nails. Um, I get laughed at a lot when um, on my Christmas list I put on, can I have six bottles of it? Um, and, um, and I go through those throughout the season. Um, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and also um, uh, Sarah, my wife, has to hide lots of her stuff. Okay, so, um, so I'm just going to put on a coat of it. Now, what this does is it really accentuates that holographic rib and it turns it into something a little bit special. Um, I'll do. I'll answer the vice uh, question in a minute. Um, as I, I'm just going to put some on. I, less is more, so I only want. I just want to brush it onto my fly. I'm just I'm going to spin it around, and bring it down. There we go. Okay, and that rib now pings. Right, it absolutely pings. Um, let me have a look at some of these comments as I'm going through here. Um, there was one that came up. Let me have a look. Um, yep, yeah, Meon is a great water. Um, yep, yeah, James, it is an awesome shuck material. Um, I do like it for that. Uh, <laughs> um, in terms of the vice, um, my vice um, is... Um, one that, um, that Kieran who's on here as well um, we it's a, a Mayer and Phases speed vice um, custom made in Germany um, that you can't just buy them off the shelf um, you have them custom made by the company um, it's sort of a bit of a sideline for them they're an engineering company um, but it just so happens and Kieran correct me if I'm wrong but um, but one of their um, one of their founders um, Hans Mayer I think it is um, is a very 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 keen fly tire so he designed his own vice um, and, uh, and and it's absolutely stunning um, so yeah so that's my vice um, and I've been tie I generally tie on a on a on a um, on an anvil of ice um, but this is just superb okay so uh, proportions yes Kieran proportions perfect um, and yes, Mr. Flay, um, it is so I don't chip my nails on the whiteboard in school. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I'm in my day job. I'm a school teacher, secondary school teacher. I teach uh, biology, um, chemistry and physics as well. Um, and uh, absolutely, uh, <laughs> today I've been talking to over, over 200 kids and teaching them. And it's less nerve wracking than talking to you guys. OK, so and, and you're not even here to give me abuse. So uh, apart from on on these comments and stuff. OK, so um, so we've got our buzzer. If I bring it in, I don't know if uh, how close I can get into that. See, the focus is rubbish. I'll get my SLR sorted out for that. Um, but we've got our buzzer. Um, I've done one coat. Normally I'd put on two or three coats. Um, so I tie a load up and then. I will um, let sit and varnish them um, and, and, and so on. So um, a nice, absolutely wonderful looking buzzer. Um, we'll catch lots of fish. Um, it doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be garish. It just needs to entice the fish. They need, they're need. they going to be feeding on these at 80, 90% um, percent of the time. Um, and you'll see them just, particularly on the still waters, You'll see them cruising along and they're just opening their mouths all the time and then they'll stop and then they'll move and then they'll open their mouths. And it's like they're basking sharks and they're just literally just um, just 
hoovering up all of these Chironomid pupa that, uh, that, are, that are going up and down in the water column, up and down in the water column. So that's our, that's the first one. OK, um, uh, the second fly, if I can bore you with some more, the second, the second buzzer, is a slight variation on this one, but um, it's, um, it's a UV buzzer this time. Um, uh, so, um, so we've got a UV buzzer um, with cheeks, but also it's got a flexi floss um, body material on it as well. Okay, um, so um, I'm going to use the same hook again, um, my check nymph. Okay. So I've got my check nymph hook. So in it goes. And as I was saying earlier, it's all about techniques because now we've there we've got some we've got the techniques that went into into tying our last buzzer and all we've used there is three materials plus the hook um, this time we're going to add in some more but because we've got the techniques we can add in whatever we like so again trusty utc I'm gonna need the trusty magnifiers because i'm not 13 anymore and i'm going to start at the eye again and again 10 turns as flat as I can down to the hook point. Okay, I'm going to bring it back so that I can just ping off my waist end there and just bring it back. Okay, okay, so um, at this point, I'm going to go for a new ribbon material just to give it a little bit, give the fly a bit of depth here um, and, uh, and, and change up some of the colors. Um, I've gone for um, this um, uh, uh, stretch flexi floss from Vineyards. There it is, stretch flexi floss. Um, you'll come across it. I've gone for the coral. They do it in all sorts of colours. Um, if I ever see it on on offer anywhere, because it's about two pound fifty, three pounds a pack. Sometimes you can pick it up for one pound twenty five. So I tend to pick up a couple of packs um, just in random colours um, whenever I can. Um, so. Um, I'm going to take when I take it out, it comes on a hank with a cable clip in the middle. You know, that'll last forever, really. Right. OK. Yeah. Now, if you were my kids now, you'd be completely be saying that, that I need that as a wig because um, I've got no hair. Um, so um, I'm quite glad that you're not all shouting that at me. So um, I need to take a bit, just cut a bit off. Be careful, though, because it does split. So you want to be you want the sharper scissors that you that you possibly got because um, you'll end up with a piece and at the end you get this little wiggly um, uh, piglet tail that comes off and it's a bit of a waste and it in it and and it all just strips apart so I'm not going to use that end I'm going to go directly to the other end for my for my flexi floss okay um, yes I have forgotten more than more than you know. Um, let me have a look. OK, um, so. Um, all I'm going to do is with my flexi floss yet again, I could just put it on the top and do a pinch turn. Let's save some time. I'm just going to put put it, put my hand under. I'm going to lift up my tying thread. And I'm just going to drop it onto the top. Now, what I want to do is position it so it's just on the side, if I can. OK, and then this section here, it's a bit of a, a bit of the waist tag end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lock in turn in two of those. OK, so that's not going to go anywhere. And now I'm going to use like I did with the other rib. I'm going to use this to ensure that I get touching turns all the way down. The good thing about flexi floss, this stretch floss, is that it does stretch, so you can make it really, really, really slim. So the, like with most stretchy materials, the longer you stretch it, the thinner it gets. The profile becomes quite small, and you don't get sort of like these bulging up, um, these bulging up bits um, running through your fly. So I'm going to hold it there really tight, and I'm going to put 
couple of turns in and then just bring the flexi floss back while still keeping it under tension and I'm going to work my way down I'm counting thread wraps I'm looking for 40 thread wraps around about there so that we've got consistency in our tying and as I bring it along and down we go you get to the point where you'll rough you'll know where you want to get to because um, you can do it by eye just going to um, flatten out the thread going to bring it down there we go that's about right and now I've got a nice tapered body okay there's no bulging on it but I've got this bit stuck out the top now the great thing about using flexi floss for this sort of thing is that I give it a, a stretch and then I come in at, and at, in parallel with the hook shank and then I just clip it and it disappears underneath the thread wraps okay and it sits there and uh, and it's all now all nicely tapered and there's no unsightly bulges running through that um, so um, I'm seeing it keep getting requests to join me to ignore it's oh yeah I don't I'm just worried about whether or not if I press stuff on here that I'm just gonna cut everybody off um, uh, no this isn't this isn't scrumpy um, it's um, uh, a bitter that's brewed from the local brewery long dog brewery which is just down the road from me that um, I've sort of got a relationship with um, and it's called um, lovely Nancy and it, it's a 4.8 um, uh, percent beer and it's absolutely gorgeous okay <laughs> Oh, right. OK. So I'm just just looking at Kieran's question here. I'm assuming you vary the number of thread wraps for the hook size. 40 for a 12. How many for an 18? So you're probably going to you'll probably find that it will reduce down to about um, 25 to 30 at that point. Um, my key marker is not just the count I found um, over the years. It's for, particularly on this particular hook, and it's why it's why when you find hooks that you really like to tie with, and they can be adapted. Okay, that um, I like tying with this one because I know that when I get my tie-in thread parallel with the hook point there, I'm in the right place. Okay, so um, so you know that I have some hooks that i use and wherever possible they're out my absolute go-to's um, because i'm really confident and happy with with their with their um, proportions um, and it also helps me with my tying so what i'm going to do now my thread is nice and flat i'm going to take it all the way back up to my thorax and there we are we dropped it in OK, I've got this nice tapered, um, nice flat body, underbody floating all around in there. And then I'm going to take my flexi floss. Now, flexi floss, um, remember I said it's very stretchy. OK, that's the whole point. OK, um, each turn of the thread, take a sip. I say, yeah, man, um, I wish I could. I'm not not 18 anymore. You don't see Davy McPhail having a pint when he's doing this, I can tell you now. Um, so um, I'm going to take it. What I want to do is I want to put it under lots of tension because I'm looking for my um, my ribbing, which is going to indicate the segmentation of the of the abdomen um, of the of the lava. Um, I want it to be slimmer at the bottom and quite significantly thicker at the top. So what I'm going to do is again I'm going to I'm going to um, wrap it counterclockwise to my uh, um, to my tying thread. So I'm going to bring it round and I'm going to keep it really tight. But as I bring it around every second turn, I'm going to make the distance between the segments slightly wider. But I'm also going to let off the um the tension so that my flexi floss gets thicker 
And when it gets thicker, it gives this great segmentation effect. So by the time I get to the top up here, I've virtually got it under enough tension just to hold it. And when I get to my thorax area, I'm just going to put a locking turn in, second locking th wrap. And it'll just sit on the top and it's set in it's set in by here okay hey jamie um where i'm just tying up um a um a buzzer and this is a um uh, a um a uv resin buzzer um the my camera's rubbish isn't it and they're they're pretty much bulletproof um and they'll They'll catch fish after fish after fish. Okay, great on the washing line method if you're fishing um, on uh, on a reservoir or a large open water. Um, great on still waters. If the fish are being really picky and they're just cruising around and you just can't entice them with that damsel, stick one of these on. You know, it's not weighted. Okay, just let it sink. Then a draw so it'll come back up again. It'll sink again. And the fish will just pick it up as they're going along. So, um, you know, it's a great pattern. Um, so George is on the Cronenberg route in Edinburgh. And yeah, that doesn't surprise me. OK, so um, I'm just going to lock this down. And I'm going to pull my flexi floss towards the eye. And I'm just going to trap it down. Like so. And then I've got it where I need it and I'm just going to pull it tight like we did before I'm just going to snip it and the end piece just disappears and again no unsightly bulge and as I just tidy that up I'm just going to bring my tying thread back to my hook point don't worry too much if you've got to go over the flexi uh, the flexi floss here at this point because we're going to tidy all of this up and in it goes. There we go. So I've started to develop it there. Uh, hi, Jamie. Uh, possibly, it depends whether or not this tanks. And everybody says, look, mate, you, you go back to teaching, right? And, and stop trying to t show us stuff. Um, there is a new camera on the way. I've got my camera. Just need to get all the cabling sorted out so that I can actually have the SLR. So it's pointing here so I can focus directly on the fly and have it exactly for you guys so that you can see it. Um, so we got to that point. So don't forget in the comments, great questions um, coming on along these. Um, Eric, I wonder if Amazing Stoke is too far to go for essential travel from Winchester. It depends what your class is essential, but possibly <laughs> they do deliver. They do deliver. Not sure if they deliver down to you. Um, well, heading down to Winchester, dude. Um, well, what was that? Oh, no. Okay, missed that bit. All right. Hello, Brian. Nice to see you. So, um, I've got the main part of the fly now. And you can see it looks very different to the last one. Um, but it's I've got this nice segmentation. And the segments... Um, are, are actually increasing in thickness as you get all the way up to the top. So on this particular fly, on this particular buzzer, I'm going to add in, um, going to add in, um, hi Will, ah, Gregless, nice to see you. Um, I'm going to add in some cheeks to it. Okay, so nice, simple, easy um, sort of hack for putting cheeks in. Just got to find myself some cheek material. I'm going to go back and I'm going to use the, um, the, the hollow holographic tinsel that I used last time, this purple stuff, it's very fine stuff. Um, and I could, again, cut off two bits and tie them in, then fold them back, and it just takes too much time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, my old trick, I'm just going to put it, put the tinsel under, I'm going to lift up the tying thread, slide it back, but this time I'm going to take it right under and spin it so that they are opposite each other on either side and it's now tied in underneath okay so there we go they're tied in underneath 
and I'm just going to hold them down because I, I want them to be very much at an angle and I'm going to tie those in and those are now locked in so I don't have to worry now about putting two pieces in there okay all right um, and um, what I'm then going to do be able to do is just bring them forward in a moment so um, let's have a look at this so uh, thanks Adrian glad that um, you got a few tips out of that um, Dave have you tried the Semperfly cheeky UV no I haven't um, I'm 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 a bit I know I in the shop I stock Semperfly stuff and there's some really great stuff that they do but I'm a bit picky when it comes to UV type stuff um, so um, I, I don't I'm not sponsored by these guys at all in any way but if they want to feel free um, but golf is my go-to resin for lots of reasons um, so and I've got it in lots of different colors so pinks and greens and oranges um, the classic and the thin man um, is great um, what do I like about it well we're going to use it in a, in a moment but what I really like about it is that it is absolutely clear it doesn't go cloudy uh, most of them I found bug bond um, uh, the fulling mill um, uh, UV I found that they go cloudy after a while and and they contain then therefore they trap more air bubbles so and um, I found with the golf um, particularly this classic it just stays crystal clear and it's also really easy to manipulate which I'll show you in a bit um, so golf really like the golf um, so as I come back to the fly and feel free to ask questions um, I'm going to build up the thorax area so I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of taper it you can have it as big or as little as you like and as before you can swap out the colors so it could tie off um, do a nice quick little uh, whip finish and then tie on another color yeah you're right Phil it is All right the uh, I do find bug bond bug bonds used to do my head in um, the thing with UV resins is that they are all cured at slightly different frequencies of ultraviolet light. Um, so therefore, that's why manufacturers push their own um, particular um, UV torches, because they are going to be um, they're going to be producing. Thanks, Dave. I'm so you talking about the um, the stuff that's on the on the spool. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the um, the it 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 remained tacky. So the so the frequency of my torch wasn't enough to actually get it to um, uh, to to set as well as I wanted it to. What I found with the Gulf is that my torch does it perfectly, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, Yes, yeah, Sally Hansen over the top. I always do that anyway, regardless of, of which resin I use. Uh, the Br Doritos Cheap Buzzer, yep, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Eric, uh, you have the Salir or Venyard's Liquid Wax. Would either of them work? Use the Salir. Um, I've got a fondness for it. There it is. Nice little bottle. Um, um, uh, it'll, it'll work absolutely fine. It is a bit more liquidy. Okay. It is a bit more, more more liquidy, so just use it very, very sparingly. Um, but if you can get hold of some Sally Hansen, okay, um, grab some. If you know anybody that works um, or used to work or or um, is, uh, you know, when, when we're back flying and things and can go through duty free, um, particularly uh, Dubai way, um, they pick this stuff up for, for next to nothing. Um, so if you know anybody like that, um, it's fantastic. So I'm just going to build it up. As we go through, there we go. I'm going to build it up, and then I'm going to bring my tying thread back to the front. Okay, and this is where my cheeks come in. So I'm now just going to bring my cheeks forward, and I'm going to use my left hand and just pinch them in, and then pinch them at the at the eye, and then put a locking wrap over. 
Now the good thing about tying them in like we did before is that they should, if we give it a turn, they should be symmetrical. Okay, so they should be absolutely symmetrical at this point. Um, and I'm just going to put a turn in front and these tag bits I am just going to trim off. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that my thread is nice and flat. And I'm going to build up a little head section just at the front, just to tidy everything up and cover over any of the sections that just don't look as good as they should. And I'm going to put one, two, three turns with my whip finish and we're done. So we've got another fly in the bag and I'm going to take my, my little scalpel and I'm just going to run the blade across it and I've got it all finished as I want it to be at this point. Uh, so, uh, yeah, frequency is important with with resins, Dan. Um, I found um, my, my UV torch, I've been through lots over the years um, and I've finally settled on a loon, um, I think it's the Infinity torch um and uh, it's rechargeable uh, it costs about 50 quid but man does it cure the resin really really well um so uh kyle hello kyle uh what's this fly called um it doesn't have a particular name but it's a it's a uv resin buzzer it, you know um it, it's just a standard buzzer that we're just going to coat in uv resin to ensure that it, it you know it can be used multiple times um so at this point, we're going to move into, I'm going to start um, adding the resin to it. Um, little tips for resin. Give it a good shake. Um, in the summer, or in, you know, um, in the warmer months, I tend to keep it in the fridge, along with all my varnishes. Um, Sarah gets really upset with me. Um, but, hey, she keeps hers in there as well. Um, so I'm going to just going to take, take the top off. Now... You can start applying it like this, like you see, okay? Um, everybody else doing. I found that one of the ways in which I can find that I can control what I'm doing that, that little bit better is um, I end up using a piece of cardboard as a pallet um, so that I can take a blob of UV resin um, and I can just put it onto... There we go, onto my piece of cardboard. It's going to have some bubbles in it. So I just need to pop those a little bit, move it around, mix it around. And I've got a whole selection of different size needles for, just from a haberdashery store, um, from a, you know, to go in. And um, I use, they've got a very fine needle here. Um, and I tend to use an individual needle. And I've got lots of different sizes for different types of flies. And then I'm just going to take a little blob of resin and I'm just going to start in the center and I'm just going to apply it to my buzzer and you can see with the with the needle I've got a lot more control at this point the resin is not going to harden unless you've got UV light going on and I know there's some coming off these lights but it's not enough to um, not enough to harden this resin at this point and what it does is it, it's pretty much self-leveling. So in the bumps between the rib, it will just fill up those individual gaps. And this protects that rib because, you know, that little spotty grabs hold of it. And straight away, those teeth, you know, I've had enough times where I've had bites and, and, and sections taken out of my fingers um, that they're going to sever that and they're going to break it and then it becomes pretty useless. I want to be able to use this fly multiple times. So I'm just going to build it up. I'm just going to take my time. Um, this is where your rotary vise becomes really, really useful if you've got one. Um, if not, put it, in one, put it in a fly clip and do it that way. Um, and I'm just going to 
build up the underside of the thorax a little bit more. If you find you've got too much, it's a case of just a bit of kitchen roll, clean it off and just run the needle over it and just take it away. That's the great thing about resin. It was never around when I was uh, originally tying years ago. Um, we made do with Veniard Celia, that was it. Um, but this stuff is a bit of a game changer. So we've got to that point. Again, you can start to see it highlighting and extenuating the uh, um, um, uh, <laughs> um, you can see it uh, um, extenuating the the cheeks and the ribbing on this. Okay, um, and what I'm then going to do, I've had my torch on charge, so here it is. So my Loon, oh, don't know if you can see that, my Loon Infinity um, torch. I um, do like it. Um, I, I toyed with buying. The bug bond uh, mains version and things like that and i settled on this so i could take it around with me um, and i'm so glad i did it's one of those one of those tools i'd never be without now so what i'm going to do is we're going to give it a blast of ultraviolet light just move the resin out of the way so i don't harden all of that and i'm just going to give it a blast and you can probably see it's picking up the colors just going to spin it around like this and what i often do as well is i just put my hand around it and cut like that so i get reflection back on the other side and i can feel the warmth of that ultraviolet light and there we go and that's the main part of our buzzer now i'm not finished there because i quite like a bit more of a bulge on my thorax area so i'm just going to take a little bit more of my resin off my palette and i'm just going to Put a bump on the top it's a it's a personal thing i'm just going to add it in like that there we go and give it another blast doesn't take much There we go. And that's that's it virtually. Um, and as Phil Spratt said earlier, um, I'm just going to take my Sally Hansen and I'm just going to run a fine covering over the top. Just in case there's any tackiness there. Hope there isn't, but just in case there is. Um, it also protects it. It also hardens as hard as nails. Ha ha. Um, and I hopefully will be able to use that fly for multiple, multiple fish. Okay. So we've got some two, two different buzzers. You've got lots of techniques in there that you can use. You could change the colors. You can change, you know, change the ribbon material, change the, um, you could, you could put in, uh, biots for your um for your for your cheeks you can do all sorts of things or if you don't want to add in material um you can go for you know the uh, hot fluoro pink golf resin and just add a little spot of it and then harden it and it builds it right out okay um so um yeah it's a great tip there chris always remember to poke the eye out guys after varnish um absolutely right i've got to that point here where Hopefully I didn't get much in that one at all. I didn't think I did, but I will always just check it and give it a little a little push through. Um, tend to use, if I'm using varnish, I'll tend to use um, the end of a, um, a piece of feather. I've got a bit of, um, oh, just hide in here. I've got this bit of teal that I was using earlier. I'm just going to poke it into the eye. You poke it into the eye and it goes through. I've gone over the eye on this one with the resin, so I'm just going to give it a little poke through like so. Like that and there we go and i'll be able to use that um and uh and fish with that i'm just going to put that now on my trusty trusty peg and leave that to to sit there for a bit um and what we end up with 
it's some very quick, easy buzzers. Okay. Yep, so Kieran, thank you, Kieran, for that. Um, yeah, strike Peacock Hill or strip Peacock Peacock Hill um, for segmentation, George. Absolutely perfect. Um, uh, so, yeah, you can have lots and lots and lots of different variation. Um, I, I sell in the shop um, some Semperfly um, synthetic peccary as well that, that makes some really nice segmentation as well. Um, but uh, it's not as good. I'm, I'm a big fan of natural materials. Um, so you know, it's good, but I'd much rather use natural stuff, but have to use what we got, don't we? Uh, <laughs> really good for getting Christmas ideas. Yes, it is, Eric. Um, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Phil. Excellent ties. Um, you know, so, uh, rechargeable batteries are good because you can always be at full power. Yes, Phil. Absolutely spot on. Um, you know, when this is on full power, when you hit that, buzzer and to hit the resin you, you often get a bit of um uh um you know you often get a bit what well, looks like smoke you get a bit of a uh, bit of material that actually vaporizes so it's a uh, you can tell that it's hot um uh yeah moose mane absolutely dave um anything like that in fact you could use absolutely anything um uh, on something like this um and i always go back to to thinking of um uh the early days um uh um with Sawyer's killer bug and things like that and and you know the bear hook buzzer you literally a bear hook tiny little bit of copper on the top does just as good um so you know lots of really cool um opportunities for you now to to tie up some some other flies um i think i'm done really um i hope you enjoyed that um it's a good hour man that time goes quick um and we tied up some flies um Thanks for all the comments. Yes, there's lots so I can improve on this and I'll take it all on board and we'll we'll move on from that um, and, and I'll try new stuff. Um, if you've got any recommendations for anything you would like me to tie in the future, let me know um, in the in the comments and uh, and I'll be hopefully um, be back next week. OK, so um, thanks a lot, guys. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.